We tapered methadone twice as fast as the rehab clinic said was possible, and over 10 times faster than his doctor said was possible, all while minimizing withdrawal symptoms, improving health and cognition, and doing marathon and strength training along the way. In this video, I'm going to share the client case study with you. So I'm going to use the name John for this client, even though it's not his real name. John is a 33-year-old male, 1.7 meters, 73 kilograms, with around 17% body fat. He signed up for my coaching in April of 2024. He had a history of opioids and polydrug use for eight years, including MDPV, oxycodone, cocaine, heroin, pregabalin, and amphetamines. He had been on methadone for three years at 45 milligrams. John used to be very sharp, but he had lost his mental edge, experienced memory impairment, and struggled with focus and motivation. At one point, he couldn't even read the time on a clock. His sleep was severely disrupted, and despite following a good sleep routine, he was only getting around six hours of terrible quality sleep as seen on his Apple Watch tracking. He also had nasal polyps, which causes him to be unable to breathe well through his nose, and he had potential candida overgrowth. Problem. Just wanted to share my experience with Henry's coaching. I was struggling with several health issues. One, sleep problems. My sleep was absolute trash. Only about 20 minutes of deep sleep per night. Only about 30 minutes of REM sleep per night. Two, cognitive issues. I'm an ex-addict, drug-free for three years. Despite being sober for years, my brain function hadn't fully recovered. John faced significant challenges. Longitudinal studies showed that the vast majority of methadone patients fail to complete a self-taper. In one study of methadone patients in a supportive environment and a slow taper, 100% of them failed, with only a few able to get down to low doses or switch to Suboxone. Two, opioid tapering is difficult because opioids reduce neurogenesis and neuroplasticity in the hippocampus, driving addiction. Both opioid use and the tapering process can disrupt SWS and REM sleep by affecting circadian clock genes. John was already experiencing severe sleep disturbances at a stable dose of methadone and couldn't breathe through his nose well. Three, using sleep tracking data from his Apple Watch, I determined he likely had sleep apnea, which occurs in 30% of methadone patients. Waiting for a nocturnal polygraph and its results could take nearly six months, a delay we couldn't afford. John also had a heightened sensitivity to glutamate dominance, based on past experiences, such as psychosis after amphetamines, which antipsychotics couldn't help, but repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation did. This worked by restoring gene expressions in glutamate, GABA, and glycine transporters, reducing glutamate dominance and excitation on pyramidal neurons. Process. Despite these challenges, I didn't use RTMS in my program for John, but employed other effective strategies aimed at making the methadone taper tolerable, improving sleep apnea, improving nasal breathing, and addressing potential candida. These included supplements, peptides, nutrition, and lifestyle factors aimed at improving neurogenesis and neuroplasticity, enhancing stem cells, increasing parvalbumin interneuron firing for more inhibitory control, implementing dopamine-improving strategies, reducing mast cell activation, diagnosing and targeting candida including biofilms, and making lifestyle and nutritional modifications. A comprehensive approach was necessary because studies show that opioids significantly decline various health metrics, are neurotoxic, and reduce stem cells. We conducted detailed blood work analysis to check specific markers, which is crucial. We also performed genetic analysis using the genetic analysis while I'm developing, and biological age testing with the Horvath clock to assess how he is aging after everything he's been through. All of this data allows me to continuously improve and optimize his program over time for even greater results. The strategy for tapering was comprehensive, including a highly effective peptide strategy combined with natural supplements and other safe, effective drugs. When John mentioned wanting to get off methadone to his doctor, he recommended a one-year taper or to check into rehab, which would at best reduce the dose of methadone by 5 milligrams every two weeks. We accomplished this taper twice as fast with minimal withdrawal symptoms, while also improving sleep quality and getting him on a marathon, triathlon, and strength training program. Results. Before my coaching, one of John's biggest concerns was whether he'd be able to recover, especially cognitively. He had doubts because he was in a really miserable state with little help from his doctors. However, John was determined to improve his quality of life and trusted me to build him a program. His sleep went from this to this. And his lowest and highest inspiratory rate had much less of a difference between them than before, indicating a much more stable breathing and heart rate during sleep. Here's his review. I had this issue for at least one year. My doctor wanted to prescribe benzos to fix my sleep, LOL. But as an ex-addict, sober for three years, I always declined. Henry figured out likely I had sleep apnea, looking at my Apple Watch sleep recording, and set me up with a solid program to help me. 
At the beginning of the coaching, I was taking 45 milligrams of methadone a day, and the methadone can cause sleep apnea. I talked about that to my MD, and he told me that the methadone tapering should be done for at least one year. BH, that's me, made me a taper program plus peptide supplements backed by studies to tap the methadone, and 1.5 months after, I'm at 10 milligrams of methadone, and I had barely any withdrawal symptoms. Here's an example of what BH sent me. Henry's super quick to respond with detailed, studied-backed answers. Now, I just want to mention that while John's cognition did improve, we're still at the end stages of this methadone taper. We should be finishing up within the next few weeks with that. But another thing is, even though his sleep quality improved drastically, as you saw in the charts, studies show that sleep quality, including SWS and REM, continue to improve for, for up to six weeks once off of opioids, such as methadone. So I'm sure his sleep's going to improve much further, and over time, he's just going to feel better, have better cognition, more motivation, and then he'll be able to take the marathon and triathlon and strength training programs even more seriously than he was during the program itself. Since we got prior blood work, we're going to get blood work again once he's off of this methadone and check his hormone levels, because another thing that John wanted to do was improve his testosterone. And opioids decrease testosterone through enhancing the binding of dynorphin, and dynorphin binding inhibits the release of gonadotropin-releasing hormone and luteinizing hormone. So there should be significant improvements. And if you want to benefit from this top-tier coaching, just go to onyogur.com coaching.